Hi, it's Diane here from Diane's Reflexology and Ayurveda. This is about how the story began. I first published this article back in 2017, but over the start of this crazy time in 2020, I thought I'd give it another time to reflect on what's happened, where I've come through, and what's going on, and what still keeps me going over the last few years. Those that have known me for a number of years know how health and well-being is a huge part of my life as well as living both your dreams and aspirations to the max. This is the story of uh, my life, the struggles and my sheer determination, not forgetting sometimes my sheer bullheadedness, so I'm sure some of you have. Just before I start, I want you to know wherever you are in your life, you too have the strength to conquer anything and everything. And keep that sentence in your mind the minute you wake up in the morning to the moment you rest your head at night. I will always be here to offer help and support wherever I can. And that's paramount. So let's go. Back in 1991, age 21, I was diagnosed with, a, with lupus, or SLE as you may have heard of it. This was after many trips to both the doctors and the local hospital. My joints had become so painful uh, to the point walking was in some days impossible. I had also suffered with several blood clots, both in my legs and my lungs. The disease can present, present itself in all different kinds of ways and everybody is totally different and that includes the way the disease can be managed or controlled with medication. There was numerous visits to the doctors and the hospitals to try and understand this unpredictable illness. Uh, it was sheer determination to get through to the end. In this time I learnt so much more about my own body, what worked and what didn't. A lot of the time the medication used, which at the time included steroids and for me was chemotherapy as well, the treatment sometimes seemed worse than the illness and the side effects were often worse too. In the years that followed it also became apparent that my kidneys were also under attack, which can happen in lupus. Whilst I spent many weeks in hospital, it was during this time I first experienced the therapy reflexology. A newly qualified nurse asked if she could practice some reflexology on my feet. Not knowing anything about this subject, I thought, well, might as well give it a go. It would be better than maybe some of the medications, or better than anything. Each time the young nurse calibrated all my results against some of the blood tests results, we were amazed to see how after each treatment there was a significant improvement in certain blood tests. It really was amazing. The main health concern that was to be monitored was my kidney function. This had been damaged to the extent of the medical professionals only giving me six years before I would probably end up in what they call end stage renal failure. And thereafter it was dialysis. I was hooked on this therapy. I read every book I could get a hold of, and at the time there was no internet, so books and libraries was my retreat. And there was hundreds of books. <laughs> in the years that followed, I continued with reflexology, and eventually, for me, the holistic approach was my best option. In 1994, I started back into work and started to build both my strength and my determination again, desperate to train in this therapy and to learn more about how it can help other people like me that have been through awful or was going through awful illnesses. The years that followed was a mixture of managing the lupus and saving for this quite expensive course at the time to uh, in, intending to further my quest with my new exciting life within reflexology. I did follow that dream and, extend, and attended the Scottish school based in Falkirk and in 2004, I qualified in the general practitioner's course. This led me on to further additional courses in pregnancy and fertility, the diabetic patient, cancer, and allergies and intolerances. Meeting new people whose lives had been interrupted by illness was fascinating in the nicest way. The stories and the friendships made over the years has certainly kept me going. Now, if you're ever wondering about the kidney damage that we talked about, well, I did go past six years, which is what I was told to expect. However, I did end up going into end-stage renal failure, but not until 2009. 
This was a huge turning point in my life. I hated dialysis. The neckline that I had, then a fistula in my arm was fitted. I couldn't work during dialysis as the tiredness was so overwhelming for me. I still though developed a quest for life and along with studying various other courses and treatments like Reiki, Indian head, Indian head massage, hoppy ear candling, a hot stone massage, it went on and on. After 13 months on hemodialysis, I received the best phone call ever. On the 5th of February 2011, I received my lifeline from the Freeman Hospital in Newcastle upon Tyne. I wouldn't be here telling you all about my story if it wasn't for my cadaver kidney. I had a couple of years restoring my health, spirit and mind to where I am now. And this is where I am meant to be, restoring your mind, body and spirit. It works. Reflexology works. It works and it works stronger coming from somebody who basically understands where you're coming from. It relates to you and it has and I have the t-shirt. My quests for life, love life, love people, follow your dreams, listen to your body, never give up hope, drink water and wear sunscreen. If you'd like more information on my work, please message or email me through Facebook, Instagram or the website dianewrightreflexology.com.